from 999, the 2080 from 699, and the 2070 from 499, and the 2070 is higher performance than the $1,200 Titan XP. Hey, what's going on guys? So I just finished up watching an NVIDIA stream at Gamescom in Germany, and as expected, they have released their Turing architecture for the gaming GPUs, and we got a little bit more than we have bargained for with the release of three new graphics cards. NVIDIA went all out here releasing the RTX 2070, 2080, and 2080 Ti, and these definitely look pretty exciting. First up, they've dropped the GTX branding completely, at least for these three initial cards, and their new RTX branding identifies their push into real-time ray tracing. Unfortunately, no hard specs in terms of boost clock or anything like that from NVIDIA, but I have filled in the gaps here from vendors online, which I'm guessing are true at this point. So release date is September 20th, which is exactly a month away. And although pre-orders are available online right now, I'd strongly advise you to hold onto your wallets until you see the benchmarks and reviews, likely in a couple weeks. So the RTX 2070 is the cheapest of the cards here, announced at 499 US dollars, featuring 2,304 CUDA cores, a boost clock of around 1700 megahertz, and eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Stepping up to the $700 US RTX 2080, we get an extra five SMs, giving us 2,944 CUDA cores, a boost clock of around 1800 megahertz, the same memory configuration as the RTX 2070, including bus width, and a TDP of 215 watts. The beast of the stack though is the RTX 2080 Ti at 1000 US dollars with over 4300 CUDA cores, boost clock of over 1600 megahertz, and 11 gigabytes of video memory for an insane bandwidth of 616 gigabytes per second. To handle these higher TDPs, Nvidia are abandoning their blower style Founders Edition cards for a dual fan open air card which not only looks a lot better, but should definitely perform a whole lot better as well. Now we first saw ray tracing at their presentation at SIGGRAPH where they released their new Quadro workstation cards, the RTX 5000, 6000, and 8000. And although ray tracing has evident applications in 3D modeling and visual effects workloads, I was a bit skeptical about how this would apply to gaming until I saw their demos. Games today use a rendering technique called rasterization, where triangles that make up the meshes in the scene are converted to pixel data, which includes shading. Here, the lighting is baked in on each mesh to save on computational load, an efficient method for creating convincingly realistic lighting in games. Ray tracing does things differently though, and here we're casting a ray from the camera to the objects in the view, eventually tracing it back to a light source or shadow. This way we can get truly realistic and dynamic shadows and reflections in a 3D space. This is now made practical on GPUs with Nvidia's Turing architecture. Tensor cores play a large role here and these were first introduced in the Volta architecture on the GV100 GPU, featured first on the Tesla V100 and Titan V for the purpose of AI and deep learning, but now we see those now on Turing as well, and the AI performance here is leveraged for interpolating pixels. We now also have the introduction of RT cores or ray tracing cores, which are processors designed specifically for ray tracing operations. And this streaming multiprocessor or SM for short has also been boosted here to a nice 14 teraflops and also with variable rate shading. To complete ray tracing in real time though, they needed to develop a new processing pipeline where they can concurrently run separate operations on separate parts of the chip and speed up the process by a significant amount. This they are calling RTX. Here RTX, which is the new ray tracing processing, was turned on and off like a simple graphics effect, and the result here for shadow processing is unlike anything we've seen today. The shadow fall off is soft and gradual, not hard and choppy when it was turned off, and the effect this has on frame rate though is yet to be seen, but it seemed okay in the demo. Next up was Metro Exodus, showcasing how global illumination can be improved by ray tracing, which I think is the most exciting part of ray tracing in games personally. Here they showed what a room with a single window and light source looked like with a direct light, then with ray tracing disabled as we see it in games today with simulated ambient lighting, and then with RTX enabled. The result here was realistic depth, especially in the corners of the room and in the roof, which should remain unilluminated. The star of the show though was definitely Battlefield 5, and after personally clocking a decent amount of hours in Battlefield 1, 
I was pretty excited to see ray tracing implemented here as well. Here, the effect that RTX had on reflections and the difference here between RTX on and off was pretty unbelievable. Obviously, you're not going to be pixel peeping at player models' eyeballs like they showed off, but the way the fire was reflected off of the ground and the car when a tank fired a shot is pretty damn exciting. Immediately after the announcement, a few board partners such as EVGA and MSI began posting their aftermarket cards online, so feel free to go check those out. Most of the designs seem pretty unchanged from what I can see, and it'll be very interesting to see how these cards compare to Nvidia's own take on an open air cooler. So guys, let me know what you think of this launch down below, and possibly if you're thinking of picking one of these cards up yourself. Personally, I'm really interested to see how the effect on uh, RTX off is with games. For example, is it really worth upgrading to one of these new RTX cards if you're not planning on using RTX at all? They did mention at the end of the demonstration that there will be many games in the future that implement RTX for ray tracing shadows and global illumination and reflections, but at the moment it's a hard buy, especially when the graphics cards like the 2080 and 2080 Ti cost that much. There really does need to be a large benefit outside of ray tracing uh, for me to see them as a worthy upgrade. We will be testing all of this in the coming few weeks though, so make sure you're subscribed. A huge thanks for watching guys, drop your comments down below and I will see you all in the next one.